to the recipe share section of the show. And today I have a vegan recipe for you, and that is a roasted vegetable and red lentil soup. And uh, I just made a red lentil soup just only a couple of days ago. And what I love about the red lentil soup, I actually made it in a minestrone. So rather than putting in the red kidney beans, only because I didn't have them in the house, I used the red lentils. And what's really great about using red lentils is they break down in the cooking process. So they don't really cook, um, keep their shape. So if your family or your children or even yourself don't necessarily like the texture or the feel of biting into lentils or beans, the red lentils is a really good way to add the nutrients of the lentil in there and not necessarily experience, um, yeah, the, the taste of the lentils, I guess. But with this particular recipe here, we're going to look at, now this recipe, I will say it again, it is posted on the the Facebook group. So if you go to Wellbeing Wednesdays with Snege, then you can download it. So this recipe here does have a few more ingredients in it. So if you are going to try and write them down today, I will go a little bit slower or just head onto the web, uh, head onto the Facebook page, Wellbeing Wednesdays with Snege, and just have a look and you can print it from there even later on today. So what I love about this recipe is it's the best thing about these type of stews and whether it's a meaty stew or today we're going purely a a vegetarian one is that they can be frozen really, really well. So I'll tend to make quite a big batch and then we can have it for another night or I'll segment it off into lunches and then freeze them and you've got them there and there's, they really defrost and heat up really, really well. So it's just, it's a meal that you can freeze and just enjoy. And I just love that idea. A girlfriend once told me um, to cook once, but eat three times. And this is definitely one of those meals that you can prepare with uh, more ingredients. So this particular recipe does serve six. So if it's just yourself and partner or uh, you're living with a friend, then you've got three servings of it, which is just fantastic. But I'd probably double up on the ingredients. So Some of the uh, vegetables that are going into this red lentil stew are a cauliflower uh, divided into its florets, a sweet potato peeled and cubed. We're going to do two red capsicums chopped up. We're going to do a head of garlic, uh, three tablespoons of oil. We also need to throw in an onion in there. And then we are going to... Now, you've got garlic twice. You'll notice that will appear on the recipe. We've got a head of garlic, which sounds like a lot of garlic, but that's actually going to be used to when you're roasting the vegetables just to uh, sit in that roasting tray alongside of the vegetables and just give that that beautiful uh, taste and smell of the garlic through the roast vegetables. But then you've got four garlics that garlic cloves that you're actually going to chop up and put into the stew. Then you've got your herbs. So you've got oregano, basil and thyme. You need your two cans of chopped tomatoes or diced tomatoes. You need your vegetable broth and you can choose which broth you tend to use. So whether you're going to use a vegetable stock or a chicken stock if you're making your own. And then you'll need some tomato paste, some balsamic vinegar and the cup of red lentils. And then we're going to add some parsley in at the very end. So you can see there's just so much nutrients in this and we've got colours and it really is a, a delicious, delicious meal. So the first thing that we're going to do, and I find that this gives it that extra beautiful flavour, is we're going to roast the vegetables. So you're going to place the cauliflower, the sweet potato and the bell peppers with the whole head of garlic. So it's cut size down um, onto the baking sheet and you're going to drizzle the vegetables with some olive oil and then bake them in a hot oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. Now with uh, another tip is that when you are chopping up your vegetables, trying to keep them equal size, regardless of that you've got a a wide variety of vegetables in there. 
if you cut them up at the similar sizes, they'll tend to cook quite evenly. Uh, so that's a, a quick little tip. But once the vegetables have roasted, you're going to heat uh, some olive oil in a large pot over medium heat and then saute your onion and garlic. It says two to three minutes, but I find that the longer you cook your onion in particular for, the more of that real caramelized onion flavor and that quite deep flavor comes through the onion. So I tend to leave my onion going and I I probably tend to start cooking that onion while I'm chopping the vegetables and keep it on really low heat. And it does give it that extra bit of um, lovely flavor to it. So once you've roasted the vegetables, we're going to cook the onion and I tend to add the garlic in a little bit later because the onion does take a little bit more time than what the garlic does. And or make sure that it's the garlic and onion are soft and you're starting to have that nice smell coming from the pot. Then you can add in your oregano, your basil and your thyme as well as your tinned or chopped tomatoes, your vegetable broth and your tomato paste and balsamic vinegar. So you're going to throw it all in together, which is really great with the onion and the garlic. And then you're going to um, take the roasted garlic that you had baking in the tray with the vegetables and you're going to squeeze the whole roasted garlic out of the skin and into the pot with the roasted vegetables. So mix everything together until it's well combined. And then we're actually going to blend it down. So we're going to use a hand blender and blend it until smooth. Now, another tip with this is, and it depends on what you like in terms of consistency with your food, but I tend to take, and I think I... um, got this tip from Jamie Oliver. I just adore his cooking. So um, I tend to take half of the vegetables and sort of puree and blend those together. So you've still got some, uh, some of the, some of the more whole vegetables. So it does look um, a little bit chunkier in terms of your dish. And then once we've blended them until smooth, and if you want to leave a few chunky bits in there, I like the look of that rustic look of some nice uh, vegetables in there as well. Then you just add the red lentils into that whole mixture and simmer for 15 minutes. I'd be adjusting the water depending on, again, the consistency that you are wanting to have it. So uh, with the red lentils, the other thing that's really great about them is that they don't take long to cook. And in fact, once you've got those vegetables done, which is going to take most of the time. And then you just pop them into your pot. We've got that garlic and onion cooking and we've added our broth and veg- uh, tomatoes in there. Then they only need 15 minutes. So I'd turn it up to um, high heat, get it simmering. And within about 15 minutes time, you will find uh, that the lentils will be cooked through and they Um, will be, as I said, they won't keep their shape. They'll sort of blend in through the rest of the vegetables. So then you can garnish it with freshly chopped parsley and serve it. It's done. So it's one of those meals that uh, you'll hear later on in the show. We're talking uh, with Jane about uh, going out and getting a walk in once you've put your dinner on. And this is one of those things that while your vegetables are cooking for 40 minutes, you can go out and zip out for a little walk (laughs) and then come back. So um, it does take a little bit longer, this one, but a lot of it's in that roasting the vegetables and the uh, red lentils come together really, really easily. So now with this meal there, I would definitely be serving that up with some nice, uh, nice bread, whether you want to do a toasted sourdough or something like that. You could have it on its own. I like to uh, take a soup like this or a stew like this and have it either with some bread or I always like to serve it with some sides like I like to serve it with some feta that you could crumble through it if you wanted or some olives and all of a sudden you've sort of got some sides and then you sort of put all those flavors together and it's just absolutely delicious and one thing that you will find is because it is quite dense with the vegetables and the lentils that provide you that protein in this stew that it is actually quite filling and so you may not even need the uh, bread with that you may just be able to enjoy it with some side of olives and um, cheese if you wanted to sort of add that in but there you have it then that is just such a a cheap meal as well and it is a vegan meal so it's always great to get 
more vegetables into your week and enjoy one night of um, meat free. It's really great for your body. So jump onto the Facebook page, Wellbeing Wednesdays with Snege, and you can grab this delicious roasted vegetable and red lentil stew. So I hope you enjoy that, give you some new ideas. And if you've never tried red lentils, you're not even sure where to get them from, you can find them just in the aisle um, at the supermarket. Sometimes it is around sort of the international uh, aisle of the supermarket where there's sort of a variety of um, different foods and you will find it alongside of the green lentils and the chickpeas and yeah, so it's always there. I haven't not ever come across a supermarket that doesn't have it. So go out, give that one a go. And if you do happen to prepare this meal this coming week, take a picture of it and post it on my Facebook page. I would absolutely love to see how you went.